please, let's welcome German contemporary Alhaji Umar Nasco as he declares the contest the governorship of Niger State. Could you please put your hands together for him? The Chief Servant, represented by Right Honorable Sayyidu Idris Ndapu Paiki, the Secretary to the Government of Niger State, the Honorable Speaker and members of the Niger State House of Assembly, the Chairman of our great party, the PDP, Niger State, and members of his EXCO, the former governor of Bielsta State, the Bedway State gubernatorial aspirant here with us to show solidarity, my wonderful wife, Hajia Jamila Umar Nasco, Members of the Niger State Executive Council, PDP stakeholders from all the zones, zones A, B, and C in Niger State, party faithfuls, other aspirants, top government officials, specially invited guests, friends and family members, Nigerites, members of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, most merciful. I give glory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for life and the honor done to few. The honor of being called upon by a large segment of our state to be a generational bridge in the political annals of Niger State as I seek the governorship nomination of our great party the People's Democratic Party in the 2015 general elections. Let me say from the onset that I accept the call of many Nigelites, both within and outside our party, with gratitude, humility, and deep sense of responsibility as I offer myself to serve the people and lead Niger State to more promising years ahead. May I register my gratitude to our political leader, guardian and mentor, the chief servant, Dr. Muazu Babangida Aliyu, C.O.N. Talba Mina, a model of compassion and wisdom for transforming Niger State into a state of shared values and unlimited opportunities within the last seven and a half years, and especially for being a leader with vision and foresight creating a stimulating environment for the young to grow and write their own scripts in the developmental history of Niger State. I recall with nostalgia, in 2007, I wanted to be a council chairman, but the chief servant beckoned on me to drop that ambition, and he admitted me, along with four others, into the Servant Leadership School of Thought, anchored by Dr. Moazuba Bangida Aliyu, C.O.N. Talba Mena. This singular opportunity has prepared me to face the challenges in governance enterprise in Niger State with determination and sense of purpose. Today, I am well groomed to advance the frontiers in the development of Niger State beyond Vision 3 2020. I have always treasured knowledge one gains from working with the chief servant, whose concern for the underprivileged and vulnerable in the society underpins the policies of his administration and reveals the measure of his humanity. Sir, we shall always remember you as the best thing ever to happen to the youth of Niger State. 
In the same vein, we recognize and acknowledge crucial roles and remarkable contributions of our past leaders in the state at various levels, which have invariably provided the much needed foundation that we are relishing today, that I mean those men and women of honor and integrity who gave their best in the yesteryears so that our today and tomorrow will be successful. Without those sacrifices, we would not have been here today. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am humbled by this mammoth turnout of supporters and party loyalists who have come here in their own individual right to be part of history and to witness the compact to consolidate the process of securing the future of Niger State. Indeed, this quality crowd of well-meaning Nigelites who seem to be making a clear call and clear statement about the future of our dear state humbles me. Your presence here, in spite of all odds, symbolizes your belief in the capacity of the youth and the young at heart to provide purposeful leadership because effective political leadership is not often defined by chronological age, but the maturity of mind and capacity to mobilize mass support towards electoral victory. I am sure we note with delight that today we can boast of many dualized roads in our capital city and other major cities in the state, which is a departure from the past. Indeed, it is gratifying that MENA is recognized today as one of the livable cities in this world. That is what purposeful and pragmatic leadership does, always. Serving in the best interest of majority of the people, the mandate we are seeking is therefore aimed at consolidating on the gains recorded by the chief servant, whose achievements will serve as the springboard for higher performance. What defines a good democratic system is the access and equal opportunities available to all. Given the ticket, we shall carry everyone along, ensuring even development across the state, and we shall uphold the trust and confidence in us by living up to expectations and even beyond the call of duty. In addition, sustaining the laudable policy initiatives and fully implementing the transformational projects of the present administration, we will create an investment corridor in Niger State to attract foreign direct investment that will leverage on our vast economic resources for the actualization of Vision 3 2020. Our economic development blueprint is anchored on the agricultural sector where we shall exploit our comparative advantage of our abundant arable land and consolidate on the value chain in rice, yams, cereals, fisheries, and livestock development across the state. Our goal is to encourage the establishment of small and medium scale industries that will promptly accommodate the skills of our local farmers, our local people, and our youth. Local government-based farm settlements will be established all over the state as the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development and its agencies, especially the Niger State Agriculture and Mechanization Development Authority, NAMDA, would be further strengthened towards realizing our agricultural transformation agenda. We shall also to strengthen the microfinance banks to enhance access to soft loans by farmers while providing access roads to ease transportation of farm products and enhance efficient marketing system where farmers would benefit maximally from their produce. Furthermore, the reforms of the Niger State Revenue Service will be strengthened to enhance our revenue generation capacity for improved service delivery. We must begin to explore alternative sources of internally generated revenue to break out from the vicious circle of perpetual dependence on FAC allocation. 
our arts, culture, and tourism sector will be explored to create additional income for the state. We will pursue the actualization of critical infrastructure across the state with greater vigor to improve the social economic lives of the people, especially the ones that the, commun the, the communities benefit indirectly from the projects. We will also ensure that all the ongoing federal projects in the state, like the dualization of sewage Amina Road, are completed without delay, while opening discussions with the federal government agencies for the construction of Abuja Mina fast rail service to effectively link Niger State to the ongoing National Railway Transformation Network. We shall also ensure that the Baru Port dredging are completed for the benefits of Niger Lights in particular and Nigerians in large. The full takeoff of the hyperdeck will be pursued to its logical conclusion. In addition, the education sector will remain the bedrock of our strategic development agenda for the realization of Vision 3 2020. We shall therefore not only strengthen all existing policies in the sector, free education, free NECO, free WAEC, free examination fees, as well as increased bursary allowance, but also build additional schools and expand existing infrastructure to enable and sustain the tempo of increased pupils' enrollment and the standard of quality educational services. Our technical schools will become the source of producing quality furniture for all schools in the state, as we shall encourage them to be more innovative and creative while delivering on the contents of their curriculum. On the whole, our education policy at primary and secondary levels shall seek to improve infrastructure, create conducive environment for learning, and ensure the safety of all pupils, students, as well as teaching and non-teaching staff in our schools. We shall employ more qualified teachers and supporting staff and ensure regular monitoring of schools by strengthening the inspectorate division of the Ministry of Basic and Tertiary Education. Meanwhile, the giant strides achieved in the repositioning of our tertiary educational institutions, especially IBB University Lapai, will be consolidated and improved upon. Adequate funding of all tertiary educational institutions will be a major priority as we shall pay more attention to the strategic growth of IBB University as a world-class center of excellence and the smooth takeoff of the University of Education, MENA. Our two state universities must be properly and firmly positioned to compete favorably within the national and international university community. The provision of healthcare facilities to meet the state health challenges will be given adequate attention. Electricity supply to our health facilities and improving the aesthetics of hospital environment will be a major priority. More general hospitals will be built in areas where they deserve them, while others will be upgraded to meet the health needs of the people. All collaboration and partnership engagements with global agencies and development partners WHO, UNICEF, GIZ, etc. will be enhanced for the benefit of our people. We believe that only a healthy citizenry can contribute meaningfully to the development of the state. We believe that Niger State has all it takes to be one of the top three best developed states in Nigeria by the year 2020 and to be the investor's destination of choice in West Africa. And we are prepared to fully harness our natural potentials for the development of Niger State. Already, the institutional frameworks have been laid as some governmental agencies, the PPP agency, 
One Stop Investment Center, Industrial Park Agency, Mena Airport City Agency, and others have been firmly established to enhance the economic development of the state. Importantly, the MBA International Literary Colloquium will be entrenched as an enduring legacy for the developing creative talents of young people and as a tribute to the contributions of the chief servant to the overall development of Niger State. The event will continue to be a platform for attracting world-class leaders and professionals to Niger State to inspire our youth towards purposeful living. Above all, the security of lives and property of Nigerites will remain a fundamental responsibility to engender peace and harmony in Niger State. Niger State will remain the nation's cultural melting point where every Nigerian will be proud and safe to live and contribute their quota to the development of this country. This is paramount because no development can take place where there is no peace. We will ensure that we deploy all apparatus to contain the insecurity challenges that may confront us. At this juncture, let me salute the perseverance and sacrifices of civil servants, the people who pilot the affairs of service delivery and also serve as the engine growth and the development of the state. By all standards, we are proud of our civil servants for the wonderful contributions to the developmental strides of Niger State. I pledge to accord the civil service a pride of place in our collective aspirations for the actualization of Vision 3 2020. I am sure that many of you will be anxious to know what I have in store for my immediate constituents. The teeming, energetic, vibrant, articulate, and dynamic segment of the population of Niger State. The majority of whom engage in some of the difficult tasks that keep our state safe, clean, and growing. I am referring to my fellow compatriots, the youth, who constitute the productive segments of the public service, especially the workforce in the Vigilant Take Corps, who keep vigil over our assets when many of us may be deep asleep in the comfort of our homes, the community traffic wardens who assist in keeping the chaotic traffic conditions of our urban centers in control, the forestry guards who patrol our forests at great risk to check the activities of economic saboteurs and environmental tyrants and not to forget the sanitary inspectors who are assisting in enforcing the sanitary laws for our well-being. Undoubtedly, the future of our nation, any nation at all, depends on the vibrancy and quality of the youth who constitute over 60% of our national population. I am therefore deeply concerned about all the issues that undermine the capacity of the youth to realize our full potentials. Hence, we shall consolidate on what is being done by the present administration to squarely address the challenges of youth development in the state. Strengthening existing public and private sector initiatives, we shall also look into the issues of the youth unemployment, underemployment, and wrong employment, and indeed, general youth empowerment to build the capacity of the youth in contributing to the overall development of our state. This will indeed be the golden opportunity to prove ourselves and show that yes, we can do it. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks another turning point in our journey to greatness as a people and a state. Because the mantle of leadership of our state is to be handed over to young generation politicians born 
and raised in this generation. The era of information and communication technology with its attendant phenomenal impact on societal advancement and economic prosperity. You are about to entrust your future into the hands of a young man who is mentally and in tune a lot with contemporary global trends. The expectations of the digital age as daily events that shape our lives keep changing at the speed of light. I am sure only the articulate, experienced, and versatile young mind like me can match the political challenges of this period. When the youth are in the vanguard yearning for consolidation of purposeful leadership in our state. However, let me reiterate that only through hard work and patriotism can we achieve our individual and collective aspirations. Let us therefore think more of how, how and what we can contribute to the growth and development of our state for our collective glory. Those who work harder and contribute more to the development of our state shall always be recognized and rewarded. I strongly believe that this address will be incomplete without acknowledging the supportive roles of our partners in progress, the respected members of the fourth estate of the realm. The media practitioners in Niger State who have been very encouraging through fair and balanced reportage of government activities. I urge you to kindly extend this cooperation and goodwill to us as I assure you that things can only get better, inshallah. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I therefore seek your support and votes to give the youth the opportunity to serve and unleash our great potential for the overall development of our state. Give us the opportunity to actualize the development agenda as encapsulated in the Vision 3 2020 document of the state. To give hope to everyone, especially the weak and vulnerable in Niger State. Dear compatriots, it is against the foregoing backgrounds that I, Umar Mohammed Nasku, today, 20th November 2014, declare my intention to contest for the governorship of our dear state. I seek your support to be the next governor of Niger State under the platform of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, in the general elections come 2015. I make this declaration with all sense of duty and conviction. The time has come for the youth of Niger State to arise to the responsibility of stepping forward to play our part in deciding the future of our state and our generation. It will be too costly for us to shirk that responsibility as I am also conscious that leadership is not a jamboree. It is a serious business of influencing positive change to impact the lives of the people for which I am prepared to give my best and I am the right person for the job at this period. I therefore use this medium to seek your support and I pledge to run an inclusive administration that will promote and protect the interest of all. We shall deliver on our promises and take Niger State to the next level of greatness. We will live up to expectations, we will live up to the dreams of the young while upholding the trust and confidence of our elders. I will not let any of us down, inshallah. May Allah help us. Amen. Finally, 
I beckon on all of you to join me in fighting for what is right, for the economic prosperity and opportunity for all. We must not hide from history. Nigerites have been never known as quitters. With courage, strong faith, and hard work, nothing will be insurmountable. Come along, join Omar Mohammed Nasku to make history in Niger State. became the first governor of Niger State at the age of 33. Oko Ebitu Okiwi became the governor of Niger State at the age of 37. Mohammed Malalawal Ibrahim was elected governor of Niger State under the platform of NPN at the age of 38. David Mack became the governor of Niger State at the age of 36. They served well. Omar Mohamed Nasko was born in 1975. He's 39 years old, loyal, hardworking, resourceful, and he can do it. Support Omar Nasko movement 2015. Thank this you, is Kansi, Evergreen Monday. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dwala Makadai Dokuma, Ghanese.